In today's video, we're talking about the final deployment of the N100 upgrade, and uh, we're going to take a look at some stats like power consumption and temperatures and overall performance. So, stay tuned. Hello everyone, and welcome to the final part in the N100 server upgrade series. Just to reiterate, the parts that we've used in this series are the Intel N100 CPU, which is situated on a ASUS Prime N100i-D D4 motherboard, a 32GB of RAM, a 1TB Samsung 980 Pro for the boot drive, we have a Silverstone SST FX350G Gold Power Supply in Flex ATX form factor, and the hard drives that we're using are the WD80 EDAS, which are 5400 RPM drives on paper, but actually turn out to be HGST uh, data center drives, uh, they're quite toasty, and they've been shucked before. But, uh, yeah, that's what we'll be basing our uh, numbers around. And now that we have all that uh, technical stuff out of the way, we can move on to actually looking on the server, what everything is looking like, and how it's working. And uh, here we are at the desktop, of course. One of the main questions I got from part 1 and 2 was, what is the power consumption like? Well, in this video, I'm hoping to answer that question. It is currently connected to a smart plug with Tesmoda firmware. I have a couple of those around the house. The one that I have currently connected it to, it used to be on smart plug rack because it is part of the rack that we have here. Um, it's actually this one here, number four. It is. Uh, it has been up for an hour and five minutes. That's when I plug it back in. And the entire server currently is running uh, using 37 watts from the wall. So there you have it. This number could probably be reduced by, for instance, using a Pico PSU. They are uh, more or less as efficient as the power supply that I've used, but because they have a lower wattage, their uh, maximum efficiency in this range of like 30, 40, 50 watts uh, is a bit higher. So uh, yeah, your power uses could be reduced by using a smaller power supply. The reason I use this Silverstone 350 watt is because I had an i5-10600 in here and that CPU can get quite toasty if it starts to uh, turbo and that can use quite a bit of power. So I just wanted to make sure that if it's at full power it's in that maximum efficiency range. I didn't really consider the uh, lower end of the uh, efficiency curve for this power supply. So maybe we'll upgrade or downgrade, or however you want to call it, to a Pico PSU. We'll, uh, Take a look at that maybe in a future video. So right now we're using 36 watts. We'll minimize this window and go to the task manager. At the moment system is sitting idle on the desktop in Windows Server 2022. Using 13% CPU, 30% memory. CPU is turboing up around 2.6 gigahertz. That's also one thing I want to mention. What I've noticed is that once this CPU starts to get pegged, it will definitely uh, clock down rapidly. And that's not just because of temperature, but also because of the power limits that uh, were enforced on this chip. And uh, yeah, what I've noticed is that it, it will sit happily at that 6 watt TDP, but sometimes only at 800 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. And that's not quite enough. That's at least for what I've noticed. Uh, I should have a copy of hardware monitor on here when it would appear that it has forgotten that it had an icon so we'll just install over it and open it up again. So what I did to combat the uh, throttling behavior is I installed throttle stop. We'll open that up here as well. So you can force a little bit more power through it. It will run a bit toastier but in the end it will perform better. So right now I think it hasn't actually enabled itself yet. But what we're seeing is uh, we're running at 5.2, 5.4 watts here, about 62 degrees. That's a perfectly fine CPU. Now it's now we can see it is power limited and it is picking up my config. I've set it up to allow it to go up to 8 watts for long periods of time and like 20 watts, which is his default turbo uh, for short periods of time, I didn't change that. But I did want it to go a little bit higher than 6 watts when it really needs to uh, put the hammer down. And that seems to run okay. 
temperatures will go up a bit. It's now sitting at 65. The highest I've seen it was around 85, 87 degrees when I let it turbo up to 10 watts of power. Uh, you definitely need to add an active cooler to this CPU, so just clip a heatsink on or, or a fan on a heatsink or whatever. That should uh, help alleviate that issue. So if we look in hardware monitor here, we can see it is running at 0.8 volts. Package is just about the same as we can see here in throttle stop. So just about 5 to 6 watts, sitting around 60 degrees. Everything appears to be running well. Clock speed around 2 gigahertz on all cores, which is perfectly fine. But that's definitely a mod that I recommend everyone that has one of these motherboards do. Just uh, use throttle stop to uh, make it run a little bit uh, higher in terms of clock speeds. You have all these various controls here. I'm trying to remember where I set it up. Yep, this is what I changed. It is here in the turbo power limits or TPL menu. I set the long power to 12 watts. I think this was actually default. I'm not sure. Maybe it was lower. I think that maybe it was 10 watts. I don't fully remember. I've set the turbo time limit all the way up to the max it would go. This will help uh, have your tasks on this chip to uh, complete faster and then it will just go down to a lower power state. And the uh, long power PL1 it will sit at 7 watts. So. Or PL2, I think. It's also confusing. But whatever. So yeah, its long-term power limit is set to 7 watts instead of 6. That will make it run up to about 2 gigahertz rather than 1 gigahertz to 1.6. That's the range that I've seen in the little over a week. It's, I think it's about 2 weeks now that, I, that the system has been up and running. I've already proceeded to uh, sell the old innards because the system has been rock-solid stable. Uh, same can be said for the uh, Ethernet adapter that we plugged into the motherboard. It is 100% stable, so I'm very happy about that. Alright, so what's the verdict? Was this upgrade successful? Well, I would say it's a resounding yes. The old system was consuming about 40-50 watts more on idle than this system is. And uh, that alone makes me very, very happy with the rise in memory prices here in mainland Europe. It will definitely save me a quick buck. And by selling the hardware that I had, this was in the end actually a straight swap. In fact, um, what I paid for that hardware was actually a little bit more than, or what I got for the hardware was more than that I actually spent on this upgrade. So in the end, that leaves me very, very satisfied indeed. Uh, I'm also very happy about the 2.5 gigabit network card. It's been very stable so far. It did two weeks of uptime, no problem. Uh, I don't expect it to uh, have any issues going beyond the two weeks. It'll be rebooted once a month anyway to do Windows updates and uh, keep up to date there. So I don't think it'll be an issue there. Same couldn't be said for the uh, USB equivalents of these cards. I'll put in a, uh, an image on screen to uh, show you what that looks like. I've never been able to get more than five or six days uptime out of one of these. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's not good. Not, not good enough for a server anyway. So uh, definitely stay away from those if you have a 24-7 system. And also, should you do a similar upgrade to this, to that I would say yes, but it depends. If you have an i3, i5 or i7 system, or heck even an i9 or an old Xeon from the last decade or so, and you don't really max out that CPU all that often, it's probably good enough to swap to an N100 or the uh, slightly more expensive i3 equivalent uh, that is based on the same uh, technology. There's also an 8-core version that's called the R3 N205 or something like that. I'll put in a correction if I got that absolutely wrong. Um, that has double the cores, so double the theoretical performance, and maybe that would be a better choice for a VM host like this. There's also the Intel N200, which is just in between the N100 and the, that uh, particular R3. Um, but there's not much hardware available for the uh, DIY market as of making this video. Or it's very expensive, like 220 to 50 something like that, uh, dollars. 
which I think is a bit much for what you're getting. You might as well just uh, build a Pentium Gold system around that on a cheap uh, motherboard, but that's just my opinion. It's not worth much. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, very happy with the system so far. After tuning that uh, little thing with throttle stop, it has been performing great. I haven't had any complaints in the house about uh, downtime of the system or poor performance, so uh, that to me is even more important, actually. So, uh, very, very happy about uh, this entire uh, journey that we've had. So, I guess that's the end of this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, this will be the last video for this year. So, I wish you all a happy and merry Christmas, depending on where you're from. And, of course, a happy new year. And we'll see uh, each other once again in the next year, in 2024.